Welcome to Chapter 2. Now, Before we get into Chapter 2, let me just give you an overview of where we're at. We're starting our unit on mechanics, our biggest unit that we'll be studying in AP Physics. And mechanics is really uh, about describing how things move and why they move. When I say how things move, what I mean by that is like how fast they go, so we have to define terms like speed and velocity, how far they go, so we have to be very specific about the terms like position, displacement, and distance, and then how much they speed up or slow down and bring in the term of acceleration. So we're going to characterize this motion and we're going to use mathematics to do that. Chapter 2 deals with kinematics in one dimension, and then once we understand that, then we'll move naturally into kinematics in two dimensions, which is in chapter three. After we've studied how things move, then we'll try to explain this motion. We're going to try to explain things like if you toss a ball upward, why does it go up and then come back down? Why doesn't it just keep going upwards? So the explanation of the motion will be explained in chapters five, six, and onwards, where we bring in the term force, and this whole field is called dynamics. The motion of objects that is all around us can be classified into four basic types of motion. Motion that is in a straight line is called linear motion. And this one-dimensional motion is what we're going to be studying in this chapter. Objects can also move into in a circle, and this would be called circular motion. And when an object follows a nice curved path, like this parabola shape, this is called projectile motion. This path here is called a trajectory. And when an object is revolving around some sort of axis, we call that rotational motion. We'll be mainly studying linear motion, circular motion, and projectile motion. And we'll talk a little bit about rotational motion. I did make a little error in the notes in that these three categories, linear motion, circular motion, and projectile motion, these all are involve motion where an object moves through space. And they are all considered what we call translational motion, which I had written here incorrectly. So before we jump into the mathematics of 1D motion and all the calculations, we'll uh, focus right now on visualizing this motion. And this is why it's helpful sometimes to make what we call a motion diagram. These are little motion diagrams. They're kind of like uh, watching a film strip. When we solve physics problems, you'll often see me drawing these kind of film stripe strips. Often I'll embed all of the pictures in one frame here. And you can think of these, each of these spots are different points in time. Each is like a uh, frame in time, all lined up. You can imagine that I've taken all these individual frames and I've just stuck them into one film strip. So if these little pictures in here were all of equal time intervals from going from here to here and here to here and here to here, I would like you to take a few minutes, stop the video, and write down, jot down what you think is happening in picture A and picture B and picture C and in picture D. Okay, so what do you think you wrote down for A? What's happening right here in this picture? If you wrote down something like he's remaining at the same spot or the same position, you're correct. He's at rest. What about B? Looking at B, you can see that all the images are equally spaced. So hopefully you recognize that this person is moving at constant speed. What about picture C now? Hopefully you wrote down the person speeding up. And the reason for that is you can see that the distance is getting bigger and bigger over time. And lastly, what did you put for D? In picture D, you should realize that the person is slowing down, coming to a halt, because of the distance is now getting smaller and smaller in those equal time intervals. This is what we often call, in layman terms, decelerating. This is what we really call in physics class a negative acceleration, where this is a positive acceleration. We'll be drawing these diagrams and we'll also be annotating them. For example, if I look at picture A, the person's remaining at rest. So the speed is zero meters per second. In picture B, the person's moving at constant speed. So I'll show that by little arrows, but all equal length because the velocity or the speed is not changing. And to show that the person's speeding up, 
I'll show that the arrows are getting larger, so that the initial velocity at, say, time 0 is smaller than the final velocity at some other point in time. And when they're slowing down, then we should have the reverse situation. So here's my initial velocity at time 0, and there's my final velocity. And when I talk about acceleration, I'll use a different uh, kind of arrow, so I don't mix up my velocities that are nice straight arrows. I'll kind of use a little wiggly arrow. Um, over here, because you're not speeding up nor slowing down, the acceleration is zero. And of course, if you're not moving at all, the acceleration is also not zero. And we'll get into the term of acceleration a little later. But here you can see the person speeding up. To show that it's speeding up, I will show kind of a wiggly arrow going this way and draw an A above it, and that means accelerating in the positive direction. Now since the person's slowing down, this is accelerating in the opposite direction. So I'm going to show acceleration in the negative x direction here. We can also show uh, positions as well in the diagram, but I'll leave that off till we formally introduce that later on. Okay, you can proceed on to the next video where we'll describe some of the terms that we'll be using like position and displacement and velocity and speed and what are their differences with one another.